In the previous video I talked about cutting a through dovetail and I also introduced the idea of slow dovetailing as opposed to the sort of frenetic dovetailing that you see shown on the videos and things where people cut them in five minutes. What we're looking to do is looking to cut a good dovetail rather than a quick dovetail. In this video I'm going to be looking at cutting a lap dovetail. Now a little bit about the two different types of dovetail. Lap dovetails are what you've probably seen on, on drawers. Usually a drawer front will be fitted using a lap dovetail. So as you can see here, this is a through dovetail. These are the dovetails. These are the pins in between. Here we've got a lap dovetail. And this is a lap, this piece along the front here. So we've got the pins there, the tails there, and the pins in between. And these two bits on either side are the half pins. And then we've got the lap there because on a drawer you don't really want to see the, the front end of the dovetail there. You don't want to see the pins showing. So what we have the lap is it means that you've got a clear face there with no jointing showing. And that's why it's used commonly on a drawer. So that's what we're going to be making in this, in this video. So these are the pieces we're going to cut the lap dovetail in. I've got a piece of walnut here, uh, 16 millimetres thick, and then a piece of beech, which is 12 millimetres thick. And we're going to join them together like that in the same way as this is jointed together. I've prepared these all up, so I've got my face side and face edge marked. And I've also shot the ends, so I've got uh, shooting face side and face edge marked on the ends as well, because we're going to be doing marking from there, so we need to make sure we've got reference edges. And we also see that we've got the face side and the face edge on the same position on both pieces. So when it goes together, we'll have the faces on the inside and the edges on the top. First thing we need to do is to mark the shoulders. So we've got two different sized pieces here, and the, what I want to do is have a, a four millimetre lap here so that means we'll have a 12 mil, uh, we'll mark a 12 mil line along here with our marking gauge. So I'm going to set my marking gauge, or my cutting gauge rather, to 12 millimetres. So the cutting gauge is like a marking gauge, but it's got a, a knife there instead of a, a point. And I'm going to mark the extent of my tails, so I'm making that mark there. And I'm also going to mark it on the tail piece. And you can see why I've squared up the ends because I'm using them for marking with the marking gauge. The last thing I've got to do in terms of using the marking gauge is to set up this shoulder on the inside here. So if I now change the marking gauge to the thickness of this piece, I can then mark the inside face, because that's how it's going to go together with the face side on the inside. So if I mark this face, I've now got the, the shoulder that the dovetail will go down to. <clears throat> so. The way we go about um, cutting uh, dovetails is we, we cut the dovetails first and then we use the dovetails as a template to then go on and, and cut the pins. So the pin piece we can put to one side for the time being because we're now concentrating on the, the dovetail piece. So the way we go about um, cutting uh, dovetails is we, we cut the dovetails first and then we use the dovetails as a template to then go on and, and cut the pins. So the pin piece we can put to one side for the time being because we're now concentrating on the, the dovetail piece. Um, and if you look, that's what we're trying to recreate. So, <clears throat> uh, so we can start by marking the half pins on either side. And I think I'll just go for five mil for the half pins. So I'm just going to use a, initially I'm going to use a pencil uh, just to get things organised, and then I'll go over and do it with a, a knife later. So I've got my half, five mil half pins either side, and then I'm going to measure the distance between the two, which is a rather inconvenient 71 and a half millimetres. Um, so I'll just write that down here. 
Um, now I think we'll do it the same way as we've got here. So we've got two pins and three tails. And I'm going to have quite wide pins because uh, the wider pins will mean that you can see what's happening when I'm cutting the tails. If I have very narrow pins, then it's not easy to see what's happening in between the tails. So I think I'll have, um, let's have eight millimeter wide pins. Yeah. So if we just go through the maths on this, we've got uh, the distance between the half pins is 75.5. Um, if we deduct the width of the pins, both pins, so that will be two pins at eight is 16. That gives us 59.5. That gives us the, the total width we've got available for tails. So if we now divide that by three, that gives us the actual width of the tail. Uh, and that gives us 19.83. Now, before you get absolutely amazed by my mental arithmetic, I did actually work that out earlier. Uh, so we can now mark out the tails. There's two ways we can go about this. We can either uh, measure it off like this using a steel rule or ruler, or we can uh, use dividers. Uh, I'll do it both ways just to so you can see different ways of doing it. Um, I'm using a, a nice sharp H pencil. It's no good using a stubby old HB or anything like that. So <clears throat> I'm going to start from one end. I'm going to mark out a 19.83 or thereabouts tail. So there, and then I'm going to mark an 8mm pin. I'm going to come in from the other side then and mark out another 19.83 and then another 8mm pin. And that should just leave us with 19.83 in the middle there. We're pretty close. Um, it doesn't matter if it's not absolutely perfect because that's why I've done it from both sides, so that any discrepancy is in the middle pin and it almost looks like it's intentional. The other way of doing it is to set uh, a pair of dividers to the width of a tail plus the width of a pin, which would be 27.5. So I carefully set that to 27.5. Actually, I'll work from here, I think, because it's more accurate there. Right. And if I now walk those dividers across, working from the half pin, and I'll make a mark there, and then walk it across, make another mark, and then come in from the other pit, half pin, from the other end, Again, make a mark and walk it across. Now, I'm not sure whether the camera's picking that up, but I've got then the two markings for my pin, and obviously the tails go in between. And that should be pretty well exact. There's not the sort of discrepancy you can get if you're just doing it by measuring. Um, I'll just do a quick measurement to see what we've got for the pins there. And that is pretty much on eight mm. So when I did my initial marking out there, I did most of it by pencil and with dividers. Now it's a lot better if you can actually um, do your final marking with a, a knife. Um, because it's better to cut to a knife line or work to a knife line than it is a pencil line because the knife line has got a definite, um, it's finite, whereas a pencil line has got a width to it. And, um, you can't actually drop a chisel onto a pencil line, whereas you can with a knife line. So I'm just marking across here. This is a tricky bit at the end here. I don't have to turn it round. One thing about using a square, it's quite important that you get a good grip on it. Some people hold the square like that. And the danger it's going to slide away as you as you mark the knife pushes the and it, even if it's just a very small amount you end up with a non-square line but it, you think it's square because you've done it with a with a square okay so we've marked across that way we're now going to actually mark the slope of the dovetails this bit here um, and i'm going to be doing that down on this face so uh, i think we're going to move the camera around a bit 
Now we're ready to actually mark the angles of the, the, the dovetails here. Um, the angles on the dovetails uh, vary between whether you're working in softwood or hardwood. Normally in softwoods that gradient of the tail would be 1 in 5 or 1 in 6. When we're working in hardwoods it's usually 1 in 7 or 1 in 8. What I mean by that, so if I wanted to do a 1 in 8 there, if I, I could actually mark out that gradient on a, on a piece of scrap, so I've, I've got 8 millimetres that way, 1 millimetre that way, and I've joined the two together, and I could actually um, offer my um, sliding bevel up to it and get the angle from there, and then I could use my sliding bevel to actually mark out the tails. But you can also get um, dovetail templates. Um, which, which I like to use because it's, it's there, it's just fairly quick, straightforward. Uh, there's not any danger if you, if you drop that, you might change the angle, whereas with these, if you drop them, it doesn't make any difference. So, what we'll do is we'll offer the tail, dove, dovetail template and slide it up. If we put a knife on the line that we've got there, slide it up and then run it down like that. Try not to overshoot the, uh, the cutting gauge line. Onto the next one, or the alternate one, and then the next one. Okay, and then we turn the template over, and we can do there, there. And then this one's a little bit more tricky. I'm going to have to come around this side. Oops. Same thing applies as when using the square really, you've got to make sure you hold the thing very tight to stop it sliding around. Now I've got my, um, my tails marked up there, I turn it round and do the other side. Now a lot of people have trouble getting the right angle when they mark these out. Some people end up doing them that way. What you've got to think about is, again, this thing about the, if I bring this over here, with, with the dovetails, they're splayed like that. So you're trying to create that splayed angle there. Um, the other side. I've got it wrong now, there we go. So I'm putting the knife onto the previous knife line along the top there, sliding the template up to it, then cutting down. And again, you've got this tricky bit at this end. Whoops, it moved. Right, there we go. Not very clear. Um, if your eyesight's not good, what you could do is get a nice sharp pencil and just very lightly get a bit of graphite in there just to help you see where you're cutting to. The other thing that's useful to do is to actually mark where the pins are because that's the bit we're going to be cutting off. It gets a bit embarrassing if you cut the wrong bit off so just mark up where the waste is. So I'll angle it in with that vice. <coughs> Looking for that knife line and it's getting on the very edge. So we're sawing on the waist side of the line. I will actually we'll get a closer shot later uh, just so you can see exactly what I mean by sawing on the waist side of the line. Right. 
Now the next thing to do is to cut out the waste. Now the waste between the, the pins, uh, I'm going to do it with a fret saw, which is a saw like this, very fine. You can't get a coping saw in to these fine curves, less by the dovetail saw. So the best thing is, is, is a fret saw. Now a fret saw is not a very accurate tool, um, so I'm not going to actually try and saw directly to the line, I'm going to saw shy of the line. So if I wet the saw down like that, and then turn it, like that. And all I've got left to do then is to just uh, take out the two millimetres or so or millimetre or so of waste that's left. And I can do that accurately with the chisel. Which is what we're going to do now. So we've uh, cut the angle of the dovetails and we've cut out the waste saw, majority of it with the uh, fret saw. Now we've got to use a chisel to take out the, the final bit to get it really crisply clean down onto that, shoulder, that cut shoulder line. So I'm going to use this chisel, this is an 8mm chisel which just about fits in there because we had 8mm at the top and it's splayed out so we should just about get to, be able to get cut there. And I'm just chopping down I'm not going, we want to eventually end up with the chisel sitting in that knife line but we don't want to go straight to that knife line because what would happen is that if we chop down with a lot of waste there it will push the chisel beyond the line we don't want that so we're going to sort of creep up on the line by nibbling away at the, at the waste. Well you'll notice also that I've got the, the piece clamped on the, on the bench top with a bit of scrap underneath because I don't want to end up with chunks out of me. Right. So I worked my way back until my chisel was actually sort of, I could feel it click onto that cut line. I was too busy talking, I didn't um, mention that. So we'll have another go here. So you can see I'm working my way back. I'm slightly angling the chisel as well. So we're slightly angled that way just to avoid any danger of undercutting. Now I can put the chisel actually onto that cut line. And this is one of the advantages, as I said before, of using knives and cutting gauges, that you can actually get a positive engagement between the chisel and the line. We wouldn't get that if we uh, were using a pencil line. We can now, I'm just changing over to sort of hand work now, just put the mallet down and I'm just cleaning up those corners. Again, making sure that we chisel is always sitting on that line or on that shoulder. Right. So we've got this side cleaned up, we can now turn it over and work on the other side. So, same procedure really. Um, and I can feel the chisel, I'll take a little bit more I think. Now I can feel the chisel actually hit that line, drop onto it, and chop them down. Again, there. So what we've got now is two reference lines one on either shoulder but they're slightly sloping up so now we've got to just get rid of that little hump in the middle join the two reference lines together and everything should be fine so I'm now going to take it and put it into the vise so as I said we've got two reference surfaces we've got this line here, this line here and on, on, on this edge as well but if you look closely, I've got to be a picture of the camera can pick that up Two sloping surfaces come to a point there, that's the sort of summit of the apex. What we've got to try and do is to sort of get rid of that. And if I drop my chisel flat onto the reference line here and pair across, and I, if I lift my right hand up, it should have the effect of moving that apex back goes without saying you need sharp chisels for this, I'm not sure this one is quite up to it. Um, but I've moved the apex back now and I can now see it, it's, it's there. Yeah, 
Um, I'm just going to take it a little bit further back and then we'll come in from the other side right, after doing the other one. All right, so I'm just going to clean this one off. All right, so come from the other side. One of the things <coughs> that's quite important here is that you actually keep everything nice and neat and tidy. Uh, I'm not saying that because I've got a touch of OCD. It's mainly because so you can see what's going on. I was talking about moving that uh, apex around. Uh, if you've got a rather scruffy, sort of untidy, chipped out surface, you can't really see what's going on. But here, you've got control. You can see what's happening all the time. So we're about ready there now. I'm uh, just going to clean up that corner. Now it doesn't matter if you have very, it's very slightly scooped out uh, across this shoulder uh, as long as you haven't got a, a hump. So if I was to put a, a square on there, uh, I might have lost the camera at this point. If I put a square on there, I can see that it's sitting nicely on both these edges. So we should have a good join there when we come to put the joint together. The last thing we've got to do with cutting the duck and tails is to just cut these shoulders at either end where the half pins will sit when it goes together. So <clears throat> this is much like cutting the shoulders on the tenon really. Uh, I've dropped my knife into the cutting gauge line that's coming there, slide my square up, grip it nicely, and knife across, then take a chamfer out here. If anybody who's watched my video on cutting square You'll be familiar with this. I'm then going to use a cross cut saw, a tenon saw, and just get the saw to sit on that knife line. There. Try not to overshoot. Same on the other side. ready for um, marking out the pins. Yep. I've cut the dovetails and we're now ready to use them as a template for marking out the pins. You might see I've got some tape on here because I always have trouble finding spotting my knife lines on walnut. It's a bit of a pain walnut it's because it's so dark. Now you can get white pencils but they, they tend to wear out very quickly so you end up with a, not a very good line. I've stuck some veneer tape on here, nice and white, and when I mark my pins from the tails I'll get some nice cut lines in there which will, I'll be able to follow. Uh, I've got this little jig here which I find is quite useful for, for beginners when they're uh, starting with dovetail because it helps them with marking out. What I'm going to do is put the pin piece into the jig with the face side and face edge facing here and against the fence on the jig. Like that, making sure it's nicely against the fence all the way down, properly aligned. Tighten up the vise, check it's fitted. I can then drop my tail piece in on top and align the ends of the tails with my gauge line. And I've actually put the tape on along the gauge line, so it helps me with alignment as well. And if everything's hunky-dory, then these shoulders here should also be in line with this face coming up here. I'm now going to mark out the pins, so I'm going to use a, a knife 
and taking it down into each corner making sure I do actually hit the corner there now you could use a scalpel for this this is an old knife that I've had many many years I'm quite sure when I first made it it's made out of a hacksaw blade but you could just use a scalpel for this if you wanted and you can see we've got the, the lines are very clear a lot clearer than they would be if I was doing it just on the walnut uh, we're now going to mark the faces down here uh, whoop, that wasn't a very good one as you notice it, it is quite important that you keep the square nice and steady as you're working because you, you're pushing the knife against the square and if it slides away you'll end up with a non a non square line Right, and mark the waist. And you can see we've got a nice clear marking of the, uh, the pins, uh, which you wouldn't normally get with, with walnut because it's such a dark wood. Also works quite well with oak as well because the oak's quite stripy and the, the knife lines can get lost in the grain of the oak. The pins are all marked up. We've got to saw out the, the waist there. On the through dovetail we can saw straight through, but obviously with the lap dovetail we can't do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to saw down diagonally from there to there, and similarly on all the others. And then we're going to take a few saw cuts in the waist as well, just to break up the waist, because we're going to have to use a chisel to get this out. And if we take a few saw cuts it helps us uh, get, it, get rid of it more easily. So, if we just guide the saw in, like that. Can you see? We're getting close there. So we've got this edge of the saw cut is just on the line and down there. All the rest of the cut is in the waste part. That's quite important that we get it on that line if possible. If you don't saw to the line, if you're sawing away from the line, then you're going to spend a lot of time paring back and it's not very helpful. It's quite important that you actually saw to the line. If you don't get it right the first time, uh, keep trying because if you never try you never actually get there. Well, I'm just going to stop sawing. Now. So we're aiming to hit both corners and I like to saw all the cuts in one angle and then change position and cut the other angle. change position and cut the other way. Last one. Right, so now I'm just going to do a few cuts to break up the waist. So you can be fair, you don't have to be terribly accurate with them as long as you don't overshoot. This saw certainly cuts very quickly. Actually because it cuts so quickly you've got to be a bit careful you don't overshoot. One of the problems with doing these wasting cuts is that it's not so obvious which are the pins and which are the which bit you've got to cut off and which bit you've got to leave there. Especially if we were doing narrow pins. I've done wider pins here just to make it more easier easier for you to see what's happening. But normally you'd have narrow pins when quite often it's easy to get the pins mixed up with the with the waste. So you've got to be careful about that when you come to chopping out the waste. Now we're going to cut out the waste between the pins. Now we could do this with a router, but I don't really want to get into that on this video. We're looking at hand work really, so uh, we'll leave the router to the one side for the time being. I might do a video on that some other time. So to cut the waste away, we're, we're chopping down, I've got a nice sharp chisel. I'm going down so that I'm just short of the 
gauge line we've got at the bottom there. You can see the, um, the tape's come away, which is sort of left a little unclear of where we've got the cut. So I'm working my way, my way back. line there. I don't want to go to this, I'm, I'm wanting to get my chisel onto that knife line there but I want to, don't want to go to it too early because if I do then the waste here acting against the bevel of the chisel will have the effect of pushing the chisel away beyond the line. So I'm sort of creeping up on it. So if I take one more slice I should now be able to drop the chisel in that line. I can feel it actually sitting positively on that knife line. Chop down. Do a similar thing here. I think I prefer doing lap dovetails to through dovetails. I quite like this part of it, the chisel work that's involved. And then you've got a nice sharp chisel, it's quite a pleasant little job. some of this bit, this waste here that's been chopped away and I'm just going to get this and I'm going to work my way down to that gauge line along the bottom there so again I've got two reference surfaces rather like when we did the uh, through dovetail and then I'm going to put it into the vise and come at it from the other direction so I'm cutting in there but before I do a cut that way it's a good idea to just sever the fibres at the back but otherwise you do the cut and the bit of wood just stays there but if you sever the fibres first then it drops or comes away. I'm just working my way down and there you can see that's the line I'm working to Same here. Just finding the line, see if I'm close enough to take a cut. I might take a little bit more off there before I cut to the line. Right, so now. I think we're pretty much on the line there already. Hmm. Right, so I'm pretty happy with what we've got there. That's all coming away. Now all we've got now is little bits in the corners here which I'm going to tackle when we've got it in the vise. Now I've got to work into these corners to get out these little bits here. Uh, now, I could try getting a, a square-ended chisel in there, but it could be a bit difficult getting into that angled bit there. And you can get fishtail chisels and that sort of thing, but I don't think it's worth it really. If you just get hold of a couple of uh, quarter-inch chisels from eBay or a car boot sale or something and, and just sharpen them to a, a skew one way and the other, they're quite adequate. So what I'm going to do is work in there with my skew chisel. and then take away the way. So I'm doing similar to what I did earlier where I severed through the fibres and then paired it away. So I'm just, I've just severed through the fibres and I can now take that away. And I'm trying to get a nice crisp corner. Now if I do this side, 
you should be able to see what I'm driving at. So if I take the other skew and take an, an undercut through the fibres and then cut that way. Now you can see there, you can see the line of the saw cut and then you can see the line of the sort of the waste or the, what's left over from me chiselling. And what we've got to try and do is extend that saw cut so it's a single plane. So I'm sort of using that saw cut as a reference for running my chisel across that plane and into that corner. I'll just get, get into the bottom there. Just take a little bit out there. All right, so that's that dovetail socket done. So if I move across, take a bit out of the bottom. In fact, I'm gonna go all the way do the others and take the, take the bottom out and then come at them together. I think this skew is not quite as sharp as the other one. One thing you do have to be a bit careful with, I've noticed you can buy skew chisels um, already sharpened like this and they've got a very, very, they've got a very, very pointy end to them. If you're not careful, you can actually sort of, if you slip, you can end, end up going straight through the lap because that's not a lot of thickness there. So, if I can take that out. See, I'm just extending that sawn face across using the chisel. Same here. take out this little nibs in the corner there now. What we're trying to do is get a nice crisp corners because one of the tests of a good dovetail is how how well the tail fits in into the pins. Ooh that's not going too well. Well right, I think we're almost there now. I can still see, just, can you see that a little bit of gauge line there? I'm just going to cut back to that if I can. All right. One thing you can do to help getting, you can see I'm having a bit of trouble getting into there with this. You can actually grind away grind away the faces slightly on these corners just to make the, make the chisel a little bit more delicate for this particular job. I think we're about there now. It's just looking a bit, a bit untidy because I haven't blown the waste away yet. Oh, there's another little bit of line, gauge line there. A lot of this is about actually looking and seeing and being careful about what you're trying to do. You know, we're trying to get a clean, perfect face. Right. Okay. Right, so we're almost ready to uh, try fitting the tails in between the pins but I just want to do a little check and I'm going to use this little combination square nice little tool and I love it and um, picked it up about 100 years ago in a car boot so um, but I'm going to use it for checking whether whether this face here is square with that face and also whether this face here again is, is square with this one and also parallel to this one so if I offer that up like that, I can see whether we're getting a square reading there. And also, 
I can also see, I'm sure the camera won't be able to pick this up, but I'm going to have to get very close. Um, whether this space is, power, is, is, is vertical or not. Now I can see here, I've got a little bit of clearance at the top here, but it's not actually touching down at the bottom, which tells me that this face is slightly sloping that way. And what will happen is when we put this joint together, that will have the effect of pushing this piece away from the joint. So we'll end up with a little gap. It might fit very nicely at the top here, but as it goes down, it'll get pushed away or it'll introduce a gap. So I'm just going to check these others and probably they're all a little bit like that. So I'm going to have to do a bit of pairing away just to get these faces a little bit more vertical. To go. Right. I'm now going to just try and correct that error that we found by pairing down this way. Uh, I'm being careful not to take any more off this top edge because that's like a sort of reference line for us really. So I'm just sort of dropping down more or less vertically. Do another quick check to make sure what I'm aiming for is what I'm aiming for is for this bit here to be dead flat on the back end there with no light showing through. That's looking good. Yeah. Yeah. If anything, that's slightly undercut that one. And that's good. So just to help the joint go together, I've chamfered the inside edges of the, each of the uh, tails, and I've made sure I've done it on the face side. Not on the other side because that would be a bit embarrassing. You could also shape the ends like that and that helps if there's any areas where we haven't quite managed to get rid of all the waste that helps to allow it to sit down nicely uh, despite any little ind indiscretions. So I'm now going to tap it home and I'm going to try and tap it home so we maintain a right angle here. Same goes applies when you try tap it apart as well. Try to bring it apart at right angles. Don't sort of go like that because you'll spoil the joint. So let's go together. Right, we are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one check you can make and make sure it's square because that will affect the appearance of the joint. If it's not square then it might look okay and then when you square it up it's, it's, it's gone. And this bit about knocking it apart is this, so I'm sort of holding it down at this end and tapping it at the other end, so hopefully it's coming away at right angles. I'm not going, going like that, because when you go like that, it loosens the joint. I'm not going to glue this joint up, but just so we can see what it looks like without all the bits of paper stuck on it, I'm just going to sort of lightly take a bit off with the block plane. It's looking quite nice. That's about it for dovetailing. If you found it interesting, there's lots more tips and techniques to be found on my website along with details of my courses. And that address is www.christtribefurnituresourcecom